Hi, this is Pete Gerlach again. I'm continuing a two-part video about basic step family facts and terms. One thing that often surprises people in new step families is that they can't find another step family that's like them. That's because, because of various combinations of he was divorced, she wasn't, she was divorced, he wasn't, they both were divorced, one was widowed, one was divorced, the other was widowed, the other was divorced, one has children, the other doesn't, the other has children, the other doesn't, they both have children, their kids are grown, their kids are not grown. Because of these many combinations, there are over a hundred types of structural types of step family. On a practical level, what that means is it's very unlikely that you will find another step family that is structured like yours. So in a sense, many times people in new step families feel like they're isolated and all alone, like, like that there's nobody like us. <clears throat> well, that is true and not true. Because regardless of the structure, all step families have things in common, which you'll find in the several different videos that I'm going to make in the near future. <clears throat> So, lots of different types of step families. I want to clarify something that often puzzles people or causes some stress. A step parent is someone who has accepted the role of step parenting. It means it's an adult who has agreed to provide nurturance to one or more kids of their love partner. A step parent is not a person. A step parent, step mother, step father, step grandfather, step cousin, step child, step son, step daughter, they are roles, R O L E S, groups of responsibilities and behaviors. They're not people. So be careful about saying she's a bad stepmom. What you're really saying is she may be a good person and she's having trouble. Um, executing the role, the complex, confusing, alien role of stepmother very well. It's an important distinction uh, in many ways, so stay aware. Step means role, not person. Speaking of roles, your family, your biological family, has up to 15 separate conventional roles mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, aunt, uncle, cousin, niece, nephew, sister, brother, great-grandmother, perhaps. Um, there are 15 conventional roles that we all become used to through enculturation and the media. We don't think much about them. They help guide us in deciding how should one member of a family relate and behave towards another member. Okay. In step families, guess what? They have the same up to 15 roles, and they have potentially 15 brand new roles, a total of 30. Step family roles can include the weird and unusual um, responsibilities of being a step uncle or a step brother step parent, a step mother, a step father, step sibling, step cousin, step aunt. There's no place in our society um, that has a traditional rules that tell people with these new roles, how are you supposed to behave? Is a step aunt supposed to love their step nephew? What's real? Should they hug each other? Is that appropriate? Is that normal? Is that desirable? There's a lot of confusion because these roles have no common social definition. There is an amazing number of books, people with good hearts who have tried to explain this is how step family members should feel, act, and behave. In my experience in reviewing almost 50 such books and hundreds of clinical and uh, lay articles, many of these well-meaning authors are wrong, or they're misleading at best. So, 
Step family, one way step families differ from biological families is they have 30 roles instead of 15. <clears throat> there are many other differences. One uh, common myth is step family, families are just families. There are adults and kids living their lives a day at a time, having good times and bad, forging relationships, having conflicts, etc. Well, yes, that's true. And if you look at step family structures and their dynamics, typical step families can differ from intact biological families in over six zero ways. 60. If you want to see what they are, go to my website, look at lesson seven, and find the article that says step families are not like bio families. Okay. One of the things that makes step families unique is that in order to form, they must merge somewhere between three and six biological families, multi-generational families. How that works is, because typical step families um, come from divorce, a child has two living or one dead biological parents. Each of them has a biological family. A single parent unites with a new adult who also has a biological family, multi-generational family. So you've got divorced mom, divorced dad, and step-parent. You have to merge all three of their families, uh, which often takes at least four years from the time the dating starts to get serious. Many people wishfully think, oh, well, sure, we've got some adjustments to make. We'll get it whipped into shape in uh, three or four months. No problem. Big problem. It rarely takes less than four, sometimes seven, sometimes merging families never stabilize for a variety of reasons. So, step family merger is an important topic all by itself. I'm going to make a couple of videos on that. There is an article in Lesson 7 that explores it in great detail. <clears throat> Such mergers involve adults and kids combining over time up to 16 groups of family things like Rituals, birthdays, names, assets, money, traditions, expectations. Um, there are more, but there is no rule book for this, and every step family has to experiment and find out in its own way how to merge these things. How do you do Hanukkah? Well, we don't do Hanukkah, we do Christmas. Oh, well, how are we going to do with this? So December, what are we going to do? There are dozens of complex questions like that that frequently members of step families don't expect and don't know how to negotiate well together. <clears throat> um, there are many, because of these complexities, there are more people in step families than in bio families, there are more relationships. There are more adjustment tasks. There's some complicated grieving issues for all members of a step family that members of typical bio families don't have. Grieving prior divorce, grieving prior death, and unexpectedly, grieving new marriage and new cohabiting. That causes losses. It ends some uh, things that are uh, favorites and replaces them with some new things. Step families are complex. The whole point of this pair of videos is step families are different. If you're considering a step family, please do your homework and find out before you commit what are step families like. In order to do the thorough job of that, study lessons one through seven in my nonprofit free online website uh, called Break the Cycle. And we'll be making a series of additional videos to help you learn 
what is it like to be in a step family and what should be we what should we be watching for and how can we handle the problems we experience like loyalty conflicts values conflicts membership conflicts those are three common biggies i hope you'll study more and not get discouraged step families can be a marvelous source of strength and support and inspiration and companionship they're just as good as bio families and they're far more complicated so i hope you'll study uh, my website and these other videos thanks for watching